<laughs> Let me out of here. Let me out. I'm a sentient creature. You can't keep me in here. Let me out. This is episode two of season four of Lower Decks. Star Trek, that is. We're already two episodes in, mostly because they dropped the first two right at the beginning. I have no bones and I must flee. I have no time and I must review two episodes back to back in a very fast manner. How do people put up with those shows that all drop immediately, like they drop the whole season at once? How do people review that? They must go crazy. You know, there's such a a demand on for people's attention. You're on a treadmill. You gotta stay running just to stay where you are. How do you compete with people who are cranking out reviews for shows that just kind of all drop at once? It must be nerve-wracking. Thankfully, I just have two episodes to contend with at once, and not the whole season dropped at the same time. I guess I should count my blessings. Even though I didn't really love this episode, I found it derivative. But it's not very much of an insult to be accused of being derivative of one's own self. What do I mean by that? You'll see as this review progresses. This is the second episode of this season for Lower Decks. The most recent animated Star Trek production. If we don't count Prodigy, it's the only one. Are we still counting Prodigy? Is it still around? That remains to be seen. This is not a review for that. This is a review for this comedy show, Lower Decks. I have no bones and I must flee. What's that about? Let's all find out, shall we? Uh, last episode was about a museum of, sh of sorts. This episode is about a museum in a way, a menagerie, or as I believe Mariner calls it, of course, a uh, menage, you know, just to be business cash, haha, ha, very funny. The menagerie, as in the word menagerie, is going to evoke a lot of different memories for people who watch a lot of Star Trek. As with most Lower Decks episodes, if I spent the time going through every name drop, uh, every reference, the review would be hours and hours long. So I'm just going to say, maybe learn for yourself what these things mean. Um, but I would be curious to know if the episode would be funny without them. It's easy to just throw in references and say, hey, we're Star Trek. People who haven't seen a lot of Star Trek have the luxury of knowing whether it's really funny or not. Having seen all of Star Trek so far myself, I don't have the luxury of knowing if it's really funny on its own or not. So I'm curious to know what people really think who are outside the uh, ecosystem of Star Trek. Um, speaking of ecosystem, this menagerie we're going to was kind of like a zoo for uh, all kinds of different animals, um, us included. Uh, you see they've accidentally picked up two bipedals. I uh, see Narj, the uh, curator, caretaker of this museum, this menagerie, for animals all across this great universe of ours, uh, has accidentally captured humans and we have to go free them. Great mission to take new Ensign Gary with us. We've got, again, Ransom, Mariner, and this new guy. Shenanigans will probably ensue. Uh, if you saw the episode, uh, The Least Dangerous Game, which I think is referenced in this episode once literally, and then another time kind of maybe on the fringe, if it's really uh, referencing or not. At one point, we bring up in dialogue the orbital lift from the episode The Least Dangerous Game. And then at the very end of the episode, someone says, I guess humans most really are the most dangerous game, huh? The Least Dangerous Game, it's the episode where Ransom and Mariner, imagine that, have to fix an orbital lift. And they get into a fight and there's a lot of tension, and Mariner doesn't want to be promoted, but then she has to act out against Ransom, and then she has to see how much she can get away with. How can we have four seasons now of a character pushing the boundaries intentionally to see what they can get away with, with the Starfleet brass, in a way? I don't really find it particularly funny anymore, and yes, it's derivative, literally of itself. How many times can we see Mariner and Ransom fighting like this? Yes, it's funny. Yes, they work well together. 
as in they don't work well together, which is why we put them together. How much longer can it go on? I just felt myself totally bored by this concept again. I was totally checked out. You see, at the beginning of this episode, when a Mariner, not Mariner, Ransom and Shax are having a little exercise session, just like uh, Deanna Troy and uh, Beverly Crusher way back when in TG, you'll know the scene when you see it, if you've seen TNG, iconic in a way. Um, she overhears Ransom saying something, oh, she won't be my problem anymore. Uh, Mariner, maybe you should watch an episode of Lower Decks. You know by now that if you overhear somebody saying something at the uh, beginning of the episode and you don't quite catch the context or the full sentence, you know you're misunderstanding it. Haha, <laughs> comedy of errors. I'm sorry, it was all just a misunderstanding. Not very funny, very derivative, boring. I'm glad this wasn't the premiere episode. This is the second episode. Um, so Mariner tells her friends that being... The gang. Do I have to say Tendi, Rutherford, Boimler every time? Can I just call them the other lower deckers? Is that will that suffice for you? Um, Talin noticeably absent here, which sucks because I enjoyed Talin last episode, and I was looking forward to her involvement in every episode this season. But Talin is not here, so she doesn't count as a lower decker at this moment. Uh, I really don't want to go on this mission. Blah blah. blah. I'm going to show Ransom what's for. Ha ha, he thinks he can get rid of me. Well, I'm going to get up in his hair and I'm going to really, uh, you know, cause a problem for him. What did he say? Oh, well, he, say I won't, he said I won't be my problem anymore. I guess the only thing he doesn't work out is his brain. He says one thing one minute and he loves you and you get a promotion. The next minute, you're canned. Paraphrasing. But that's basically what Mariner's thinking. It's not what I'm thinking because that whole plot line doesn't seem particularly fun or interesting. So we have to take Ransom Mariner, who does not change into her uniform she keeps her exercise gear on why ransom allows her to get away with this i have no idea it it it, it is played in the episode as if ransom is in on the joke and won't let her get in trouble so we're taking a character who was at worst dangerous and at best fun loving and we're saying to her i'm not gonna get you in trouble for any reason Dangerous combination. And guess what? Spoilers. We end up getting someone killed in this episode. It wasn't funny. It's a little bit creepy. Even if it's not your fault, somebody died in your watch. Right? When I'm on the scene, when Starfleet's here, and at the end of the day, someone isn't alive anymore, even if it's their fault or not, you know, you have to contend with the thought that, wow, I was here, I left, someone died, why would anyone want me to come back? That's the mindset you gotta get in, right? And we did end up killing somebody, and that is unfortunate. We killed Nerj. Nerj was the operator of this menagerie. He takes us on his tour. Uh, we need to get these humans out of here because they belong to us. They're sentient creatures, they can't stay here. Nerj made a mistake. He reported it. He's asking us for help. No harm, no foul. Let's get these humans out of here. Um, not before we release the Moopsie. You know from uh, sci-fi, from comedy, from basically anything. Anytime a creature looks really cute, it's not. It's dangerous. And the Moopsie drinks bones. And it turns out Nerj, he looks like a scarecrow or a peeled banana. He has an interesting design to him. But guess what? He's alive, but his body is basically totally ossified. What's that mean? He's basically brimming with bones. <laughs> to quote the episode. Um, Lower Decks has a way of just creating funny sentences like that that stick in my brain. I may have a compilation of moments that live rent-free in my mind from Lower Decks when this series is over. If it's going to ever end. I guess it just got renewed for season 5. So, by the way, we are on season 4. Uh, we're now tied with Discovery with this show. Um, we're at the magical season where it's like make or break. Have you noticed that? Um, Enterprise got to four seasons, canceled. Discovery got to four seasons, managed a fifth one, canceled. What is it with four? Hmm? This is the Miracle Mile. Will Lower Decks make it? We got a fifth season, but are they going to announce that's the last one? Me thinks Lower Decks is going to be around a little bit longer. Somehow, I just got the feeling in the air that this show has a more general appeal. 
just from looking at the comments and the traffic that my reviews are generating, as small as it is, I feel as though Lower Decks has more of a positive re reaction, amongst my viewers at least. It feels like it's not extremely divisive at this point, which is good. It's unfortunate that we crammed the first two episodes together when this season launched, because now I don't know what's going to happen after Lower Decks. It's different when you got a constant flow of Star Trek, but Prodigy is in question at least, and Discovery got moved back into 2024, some, some distant future of 2024, whenever that is. So we could be at a point where we're kind of lacking Star Trek. And that one extra week for the this episode, where it should have been in the timeline of reality, maybe could have did a lot for keeping people subscribed. These shows now live and die by their subscribers, you see. We're trying to run these streaming platforms, and you need to keep people going. You need to pe keep people around just for that next payment period, you know. Um, prediction. Maybe one day we could see shows that have one episode every two weeks. Uh, we'll sell it to people, so these shows are going to be better. They're going to be longer. They're more expensive. But we're doing an episode every two weeks. See? So please stay subscribed a little longer. I don't know. If, dis if Discovery is months out after uh, Lower Decks ends and Prodigy is nowhere to be seen on this platform, that being Paramount+, Plus. I may just decide to momentarily cancel my Paramount Plus. I know they don't want that, but I'm not made of money. Um, I just hope they realize that. Now, to get off of that tangent and back into the game, the Moopsie is free. Who set the Moopsie up? Who set the door out for the Moopsie? Who done, who done let the Moopsies out? Um, we're playing the blame game. You did it, Mariner. You've been pulling insubordinate crap all day. Good guess, Ransom. But it wasn't Mariner. For whatever reason, Ransom is willing to just totally believe Mariner when she says, I didn't let the Moopsie free. Even though, quote, you've been pulling insubordinate crap all day. It makes one wonder. Then we blame Nurge. Of course, Nurge would set the Moopsie free. So we could uh, kill the humans or trap them in some way the reasoning didn't make much sense to me but Nurge wants more humans for his menagerie Ransom, Ensign Gary Mariner, you'd make a perfect addition that's why I set the Moopsie free wrong, the Moopsie kills Nurge like I said before sadly we got someone killed, an innocent person haha <laughs> funny um, who set the Moopsie free well, who could it have been it's not us, it wasn't Nurge it was the humans we came to set free Ha ha, I guess humans really are the worst, aren't we? I don't know about that. We also have a starship outside, um, that being the Cerritos, I believe. Uh, we notice it because the door is flipped upside down that had a graphic of an umbrella on it, and they put it back wrong, which the visual of this did make me laugh. I thought it was very funny. Um, <laughs> that's how they catch them. They put the door back on wrong. You could have gotten away with it but you accidentally put the door lid back on, showing you messing around with the circuitry to set free the Moopsie to kill us and then, I don't know, take over the menagerie for yourselves? Bad humans. Bad. You're staying in the menagerie, and we do leave them there. That's kind of your A-plot, the Mariner Ransom plot. Are we any further along with the whole dynamic between these two characters? I don't know. It's derivative. It's samey. Um, just accept the promotion, Mariner. What's wrong? What, Mariner, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah, okay, it's funny. The interpersonal drama, it's interesting, but I, I just, I'm, you know, we're going in, we're, we're in season four here. It's time, let's just, a uh, suggestion. At this point in time, I would say Lower Decks would be better served by just playing it a little more straight. I know I may have mentioned this in my last review for the uh, episode two Vix, but Let's just promote these characters. Let's just make them a little bit more normal. You know, maybe someday we're not going to always have these characters in Lower Decks. Maybe one day we'll have a new crew of Lower Deckers show up who are different and more funny and maybe more crazy. I don't know. But let's always keep things moving. Let's keep it dynamic. I'm not a big fan of seeing, say, Riker stay second in, or number one, second in command on the Enterprise as Picard's uh, XO 
for seven seasons straight denying every opportunity for promotion. I didn't particularly love that. Um, TNG, maybe we shouldn't have got the last two seasons and we should have immediately went into a Riker show, like a, a USS Titan show. Maybe that would have been a cool timeline to live in, you know, instead of set. as much as we love TNG, think outside the box, you know. Maybe one day we could have that with Lower Decks. We could have sh another show called Lower Decks 2 or The Lowest Decks. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. But that's your A plot. Your B plot involves finding new rooms for our characters and the shenanigans, uh, the comedy that Rutherford gets up to. You see, it's funny that last episode I complained that Rutherford hadn't got promoted. Rutherford broke the Voyager. Rutherford saved the day. Why didn't he get promoted? We'll see why in this episode going forward. This review, that is. Um, <laughs> I want to deliver another thank you card, like I said before, to the developers of Modern Trek, in that we have a character whose uh, room and their window is directly beside a Basar collector. I always wondered what it was like when your room was directly beside the glowing red Basar collector. I had always assumed that you had dimmer switches on these windows, and of course you do. But Boimler, in those old scientists, Strange New Worlds, he was an expert on the Enterprise and made no mistakes. However, this time, on his own ship, he forgets that you have dimmer switches until Rutherford comes in and presses the button. It makes for a funny scene, it made me laugh, and we finally address what it's like to live directly beside a, well, nacelle, or maybe say an impulse exhaust, things like that. Very funny, haha, -ha, but making a mistake on our own ship? <sighs> Call me hypocritical, I don't feel like really faulting him. When he was on the Enterprise, I wanted him to have some more faults, and now this time, he's having a fault that he obviously shouldn't have. But hey, was it funny? Yes, it was funny. I'm not willing to really dig back into the past and really get too into the weeds over, over Lower Decks. Why are you not taking Lower Decks seriously now? I thought you wanted to take it so seriously. Blah, blah, blah. At this point in time, I'm willing to take the laughs when they come to me. I'm willing to take them. I'll say that because I'm an easygoing person. Um, but just remember, I remember those old scientists. I remember, uh, the least dangerous game. I remember the episode two Vix, and I, I'm watching this episode now. That being, I have no bones and I must flee. Must be referring to the humans that are stuck in the menagerie still, by the way. Um, Rutherford and Tendi are fighting over this promotion business. It's so sad that you don't have a promotion, Rutherford. Now we're separate again. We're going to have different, uh, quarters. Aww. Uh, in this episode, Rutherford is battling against a character called Livick. Uh, Rutherford wants his promotion, and he wants it now. He needs that pip, you see, um, so he can be at the same level as Tendi. Uh, although maybe having a different rank between these characters could have been interesting for the character chemistry. But we want everybody on an even footing, so Rutherford has to get that promotion by any means possible. However, there's a new ensign on board, Livick, who's always one step ahead of them. Uh, oh no, I got the vibration of the war core down by 0. 0.6 whatever. Oh no, Livic already did it. That's funny, Livic just did that. Uh, the Tucker Tubes. Those tubes, you see them in this episode? They call them the Tucker Tubes. Tucker, a name from so long ago that we can retroactively go back and always call them Tucker Tubes. <laughs> People who have seen Star Trek know what I mean by Tucker, and they know what they mean, what I mean by these tubes. You've seen them again, I've seen them before. Here we are. Uh, one of the best props ever, the two glowing orange tubes. And then didn't live it figure out how to put a third one in. The Billups tubes now. We have a third one. Uh, <laughs> he found out how to get around. With, he, he, he figured out how to get around the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. I don't know if that's exactly what they said. But it was something to that effect. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. That uh, we found a reason to work these tubes into the plot. These old props that we used to see everywhere. Um. That's another thing with Lower Decks, is it plays around with the props a lot, you know. Since we can animate things, we can draw whatever we want in. We can bring back whatever we want. We don't have to construct it. So we can, uh, you know, make 
Lower Decks, a veritable smorgasbord of ancient Star Trek prop references. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it. Uh, uh, speaking of that, we do have the uh, visor from Is There in Truth No Beauty? I can never remember the name of this episode, right? This TOS episode, where they have to look at the Medusin and Spock has to put this visor on, you know, Medusin, like the like Zero from uh, Prodigy. Uh, that does show up. Uh, uh, Boimler uh, used it to momentarily um, not be blinded by the uh, brightness of the Becerra Collector. Um <laughs> Uh, turns out at the very end that uh, Rutherford has gotten lots of promotions before. This is how it's, how it's explained how he can be so successful and still an ensign. Not unlike Kim, I guess, from Voyager. Um, he's been denying his own promotions all this time, and he just reveals it to Tenny now. And we have this thing in engineering where we need a scientific breakthrough in order to warrant getting a pip, and then Tenny's like, ah, whatever. Phillips, can you have his pip now? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Phillips just throws him the pip. He just throws it across the room. <laughs> and then uh, they just catch it and put it on Rutherford. There you go. It's the, It was like the funniest promotion ceremony I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it makes me appreciate not having him be promoted last episode. I guess the week, the week of waiting had this episode come out a week later uh, may have killed me. But it was funny now seeing it uh, him be promoted and... Um, to look back at the previous episode and realize that he was just denying his own promotion all this time, and he had to make another breakthrough in order to have a reason to get it, and he just couldn't beat Livick this one time. Quite amusing. Um, we also see scenes with Boimler trying to find new quarters. Um, he doesn't want to sit in the room that's bright with red light, although Rutherford hits the dimmer switch later on. We see him trying to sleep directly between two holodecks, one with Shax and one with, I believe, the captain, uh, going on their adventures. Um, you know, having a little bit of romp in the Robin Hood room. Um, say no more, say no more. Uh, a comedy of mistakes, a comedy of errors, a comedy of misunderstanding. That's Lower Decks in a nutshell. And this was Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 2. I have no bones and I must flee. Poor Narj. Narj got deboned. He got debodied. He's brimming with bones. He's ossified. He's Narj. He's gone now. Very sad. And we have another episode with the museum. Not unlike, what was it called? Kayshawn, his arms wide, arms open, something like that. Do you remember the first time we went to a museum in this show? Like two seasons ago or something? And now we're back. This show is very uh, fond of looking backwards, looking at old things, putting them in their proper place in history. I guess I should be happy about that uh, because I'm becoming old myself. Maybe I could get my proper place in history. Maybe I could be... Uh, laminated and stood up in a uh, display doing something cool and not totally embarrassing for people to gawk at me and put a coin in a thing and say, hey, look, it's Mark. Isn't he cool? Wink, let's take a picture with his body. One can only hope. Musically, I didn't really hear much going on with this episode, sorry to say. The Lower Decks theme is great as always, but this episode was mostly just deaf for me, to be honest. Um... Could have used some cool TOS music here and there, because just because I love it. But to me, there was nothing really presenting itself in this episode of Music and I'm sorry to say. Thematically, derivative. We're doing the whole Mariner Ransom fighting over promotion plot line again. Uh, Rutherford was denying his own promotion. We haven't We've seen that before, especially with Riker, like I said. What was really going on with this episode thematically? Not much. At the very least, it was funny. Plotline, again, we've already seen this plot mostly in the least dangerous game of Lower Decks. Um, we've been to museums twice now. We're not winning on that front. Visually, we're getting some fun references. The Moopsie is cute, but dangerous. I liked looking around in the museum. I liked the visuals that were on display with regards to Cerritos, of course, with regards to the ships. Um... It was fun to me to finally see what it's like to uh, try to live beside a Basari Collector. And I don't think this is the end we've seen of Livick. With all that considered, we're not really winning on many fronts. But I did get a good laugh, especially from the end, when we punched out Ransom's teeth to create a trail, a trap, for the Moopsie. Because I guess teeth are the same thing as bones. I don't know. Feel free to correct me in the comments. 
and he got a new set of veneers from Dr. Tana. <laughs> Hard to really uh, imitate it. But uh, we ended on a high note. We ended on with... Uh, we ended on the note of that uh, admittedly hearty laugh for me. So if I'm getting a few laughs, how badly can I complain? The episode is achieving what I set out to achieve. It's just not really achieving anything new. We get the development of Ruther Rutherford finally moving forward to join uh, his friends as Lieutenant Junior Grades. And that's just about what this episode achieves in a nutshell. This was Lower Deck Season 4, Episode 2. I have no bones and I must flee. And I'm going to have to give this episode a 5 out of 10. We're just getting to the finish line. Not as good as the first episode of this season, but not that bad either. I've seen a lot worse, but I've seen a lot better. I'm Lieutenant Merrick, and I'm going to see you for the next episode of Lower Deck Season 4. So long.